21st June is regarded as the World Music Day and I've always looked at math and looked at music together. The reason being children are extremely fond of music. They catch the rhythm very fast and if that is so then why not help them learn mathematics through something that they like and they are able to relate to. So I went on to explore various possibilities and today I'm here to share those with you. So if you are a teacher, please make sure that you take it into the classroom and try and see if this works for you. If you're a parent, help your children have understand concepts and remember things faster with this idea. And if your students watching it, why don't you make your own tunes with the concept that you really want to remember. Let me take examples. For example, if you are in the pre-primary, so numbers and music go very well in terms of rhymes. For example, if you have one, two, three, four, five, once I caught a fish alive, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but I let it go away. Why did you let it go? Because it bit my finger. So which finger did it By The little finger my right so that is the concept of one two three four five till ten counting helps and children remember this very fast and they pick it up because it's like a jingle it's a rhyme okay so that's something which is very interesting the other thing is when you generally have counting children are very fond of counting and they do one two three four etc but when you ask them to do backward counting it becomes very difficult for them so when you say you know ask children to arrange things in descending order in the later stages it becomes a little difficult because they are not very familiar with that. So something which we do with the pre-primary children is five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell down and broke his head. Mama called the doctor. Doctor said no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Now four little monkeys. So you see that it goes on from five, four, three, two, one and no monkeys were jumping on the bed which introduces the number zero. But the children have always come back to me and said that ma'am you know these were things which really stuck on to our mind and we never forgot. And when it was you know ascending and descending order for bigger numbers we would always remember this idea and the concept that you've taught and we would take from this particular leaf. So that's what is important. It may not have to be for every concept. You might have to teach them for a particular concept but they will make it for their own topics which they find it difficult. So do not waste time and make sure that you integrate music and math in every area that's possible. Another thing is generally when you have the tables. So tables are introduced in two particular ways when we say one group of two, two groups of two. There are also tables which generally schools teach them as two ones are two, two twos are four, two threes are six. So I'm going to take up that example maybe. And how do I introduce it? So when I started uh, my teaching career, uh, I would generally do it the way, you know, pictorially or write it on the board and ask the children to, you know, kind of say it and then write it five times, etc. But what I found in a few years of my teaching experience that it becomes very monotonous for, you know, how many of those tables would the children write? So then I said, okay, why not put a tune to it? And I said, okay, see, I'm going to do a particular tune for this particular labels. And I'm going to leave it open for the class for you to come up with any tune that you want. So I said, two ones are two, two twos are four, two threes are six, two fours are eight, two ones are two, two twos are four, two threes are six, two fours are eight. And I went on to say the tables. And they said, bam, this is amazing. I don't think I'll ever forget that. Come on, let me do it. And then the, each of the groups try to put it in a different tune. And generally at that particular age, you're very familiar with few of the nursery rhymes and few of the songs. So they try to, you know, plug and play that particular tables in that tune. That's fabulous. All that we want is we want children to remember, of course, with the understanding of what multiplication is about. And then it becomes easier, like how we have acronyms. So don't we have a shortened version? So something like that is what we're looking at. The other thing that I've got is a beautiful Macarena song, which is for counting, say, from 1 to 100. So I'm going to show you the action. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 10. One, two. That is 110. And then I change it for the next one. So I say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is 110. 
and then go on to say 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That is two tens. And again, change the action. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That is two tens. So you make your Macarena steps and then you make the children say these numbers. So the numbers come fluently for the children because they know the Macarena steps. So you can fix it for certain age groups saying that, okay, this is the pattern in which we do it. And then you can say for the higher grades and when you go on to do something else, maybe prime numbers, maybe it could be composite numbers or you're talking about maybe uh, skip counting, etc. You can do your action in the way that the children find it comfortable. So it is age appropriate that you need to do. So for the little ones, I try and fix the particular steps and they follow those actions. So it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then you take your hand behind and then you take it beside, cross it and take it beside and then you do two claps and then say that is 110. So remember 10, 20, 30 is not just numbers but we're also teaching them that 20 is two tens, 30 is three tens, etc. So that is an interesting one. Uh, going forward for the higher grades, I've always found that, you know, children find it extremely difficult when it comes to, say, you know, algebraic identities, fractions, decimals. So I would always say, come on, let's now try and see if we can uh, have a song which is coined for uh, these particular things. And one of that which I want to share with you is a very interesting one. This is not something that I did. This is what my students had done. I don't think I can replicate it in the way how they had beautifully done it. But I'm going to try that. So they said, uh, you know, ma'am, algebraic identities are so boring. So I said, why don't you relate it to some song that you know? And that particular year, there was a craze for this song, Why This Cola Verity? So they said, and that particular group. So I said, you want to do it in the form of a role play, you do it. If you want to do it in the form of a cartoon, you do it. So that you remember what is it that's going to, or a jingle or whatever works. So they said, why this identity, 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 t, 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 why this identity, 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 t. A plus B the whole square is A square plus 2A B plus B square Why this identity, 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 T A minus B the whole square is Remember there is a minus there A minus B the whole square is A square minus 2A B plus B square why this identity, 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 T. Wow. And that particular year, none of my students made any error in having their algebraic identity identified or any questions based on that. So that works. So music is so important and integral and children love it. So why not use that with any subject that you're teaching? Immediately, you're not talking only about math. You can try and incorporate it with your periodic tables. For example, if you're, if you're doing something like a chemistry, you can see, look at your periodic table and say, H-L-I-N-E-K-R-B-C-S-F-R, D-E-M-G-C-A-S-R-B-A-R-A and then make a particular tune, that which the children can relate to. And generally, the latest song that you're familiar with is what they will relate to. Another thing is a lovely game that I love to play with my children. So suppose I have, uh, I want to teach them the skip counting in twos or the threes or the fours, etc. Let me take two and three, uh, three for example. So here I have got the numbers which are written. And wherever the number two comes or the multiple of two comes, you're going to say zip. Okay, and that's how the children are going to be attentive. So each child tells a particular number, but if that number happens to be a multiple of two or comes in the two times table, you will not say that number, but you will say zip. So it is for children to identify saying those numbers are they divisible by two or they come in the two times table, which helps. So let's start. So suppose I'm child number one, I will say one. The next child, whoever is there in your classroom, will not say two, but will say zip because we're talking about skip count in twos. So one, zip, three, zip, five, zip, seven, zip, nine, zip, eleven, zip. And that's why and they're, they're eager to know, okay, yes, it becomes easier for children to also understand that, okay, you're dropping a number and then saying zip. That's absolutely okay because that's the logic you want them to understand, right? Now let's look at, for example, if it is three times table or skip counting in three. You will say one, two, let, let me say instead of zip, I change it to zap, okay? So one, two, zap, four, five, zap, seven, eight, zap, ten, eleven, zap, 
so this is more than uh, music it's also a kind of an activity and a game so they look forward to seeing this and then the you know you can go ahead to the various tables and then you can make it even more interesting by saying zip zap because if for example you want to say it has to come in the tables of 2 you say zip if it is coming in the tables of 3 you say zap but if there is a number for example a number like 6 comes in both the two times table as well as the three times table you will say zip zap and you can keep increasing that so they will start with one zip zap four five four will they say four no they will not that's the beauty so you will say one zip zap zip because four comes in two times table five and six is interesting zip zap because it comes in the two times table and the three times table so it's like a music and it has a pattern to it so when i say pattern that's an interesting thing again which i play with the children so when you have for example a circle square circle square what comes next or a plus minus plus minus what comes next so an interesting thing uh, is you know a uh, um, the the was a the farmer who had a dog and bingo was his name so that's again a pattern if you see there was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name o b i n g o b i n g o b i n g o and bingo was his name o there was a farmer had a dog and bingo was his name o b i n g B I N G, B I N G, and Bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh, B I N, B I N, B I N, and Bingo was his name. Oh, so. You may ask me how will I relate it to math? I will relate it in beautiful ways in terms of saying that you know I had that A B A B A B A B. So what comes next? So they follow that particular pattern. So you can do a lot of patterning with uh, you know songs and uh, rhymes and what 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 actually uh, is something that the children enjoy is what you relate it to. That's all. So when you start loving what you're hearing and listening and you want to repeat it again and again, that's exactly what we want our children to do. We want them to practice it, understand, and that more of practice helps. What about the metric unit? You know, generally it's very difficult. Ten millimeters is one centimeter. Ten centimeters is one decimeter. Ten decimeters is one meter. It's so difficult. Okay. So now, why not make it into a kind of, a, you know, a kind of slogan, rhyme, jingle, whatever you may call it? Like, for example, ten millimeter is one centimeter. Ten centimeter is one decimeter. Ten decimeter is one meter, and that's how long your guitar is. So, and then talk about the other. metric units so they will never forget in, you know in the exam hall they will say oh yeah guitar is 1 meter long okay yes how do i convert it so it becomes easy for the children so teachers parents students whoever are watching this video make sure that you make math more enjoyable and that is possible when you integrate math and music together so today on this world music day i would love to tell all students that math is something which you will start loving it the moment you start enjoying it so have fun children and do a lot of math and become great math experts thank you